Our ancestors made sense of reality by telling each other stories of their gods. This is our attempt to bring those tales back to life. I am Hades, oldest of my brothers, Zeus and Poseidon, the fourth child of Kronos and Rhea, the mighty Titans before we Olympians. When our father fell, we took over the universe. My brothers bickered for the throne on Olympus while I watched. In the end, we drew lots. Brash Poseidon drew first, of course, huffing and puffing when he received the mighty oceans. I got the underworld, of course. And it was fair, for Zeus had earned his place as our ruler. None of the Olympian gods would be standing in this realm today if it were not for him. So, I took the duty no one wanted, the one of most burden and responsibility. <sighs> Poseidon laughed as I left Olympus. I leapt into the skies and transformed into a great raven, floating above the clouds. I flew across the lands, high above the grandmother Gaia, the Earth. I passed above the great chasm that Uranus once dropped the Cyclopes and Hecatonicaries in, the place we trapped the Titan souls after the battle was won. The dark tunnel all the way down, deep in the earth, led to Tartarus. As I looked down into the dark, the memory of their souls dropping flashed in my mind. But I flew on. Further and further I soared in the skies, until I saw the lake. Hidden from mortal eyes, there are points on this earth that open like mouths into my new realm. I descend into a cave at the very end, in the darkest corner of the jagged stone walls. The veil between worlds thins. With my godly eyes, I see the shimmering line between realms. A pocket from this material world until the next. I walked through the wall. My body was sucked into the shifting stone, and I am transported to a shore of sand. It is darker here. The sands seem more muted compared to the colors of Gaia. It is solemn, as if missing something as if washed of life itself. The sky is a diluted grey. I look out onto the waters. Dark and thick, they swirl as made of black smoke, rather than the liquid it is. But I would know these waters anywhere, for we gods swore an unbreakable oath upon them. They aided us in the war, the Titanomachy. It is the River Styx. A boat waits on the shore not far off, with a cluster of beings before it, and I walk to meet them. The woman stood at the head of the welcome party, draped in black flowing robes. She spoke before I could utter a word. Welcome, my lord, to Hades. It is a pleasure to see you again and under better circumstances. The great river Styx. You honor me with your form in coming to greet me. It is a privilege to welcome you, my lord. It is true, I do not personify often, but when the occasion calls for it, I can spare some thought to manifest and still continue to do my duties. But Hades? This is the Underworld, is it not? We named it in your honour, my lord, for we are grateful that it is you who comes to rule. My name 
synonymous with the land of the dead forevermore. Mortals will be afraid to even utter my name, and the chance it brings them to my gates quicker. <sighs> I could hear Poseidon's mocking voice itching at the back of my head. I smiled at the delegates before me. An honour indeed. Before we begin, my lord, you need no introduction, of course, for Thanatos. A man I knew well stepped forward from the group, large wings parallel to his shoulders. He bowed his head. We shook hands and exchanged small smiles. We fought together in the war. It was good to see familiar faces in a place so new to me then. The next man beside him was skinnier in pale grey robes. He had longer hair and a far-off look. He shook his head, freed of distracting thoughts, and bowed lowly to me. This is Hypnos, the god of sleep. He sees to the dreams and the nightmares that plague gods and mortals alike. The next man was smaller than the rest, with a long dark hood drawn over his face. The end of a crooked nose peeked out from the shadows, followed by a flowing beard. His robes were dirtier than the others, the lower section covered in wet sands. The darkness of them seemed to move and shift, much like the shadows of the water in this realm. He held a long staff that became thicker towards the end, like the oar of a boat. He bowed just as lowly as Hypnos had. This is Charon, the ferryman. He is charged with carrying mortal souls to our realm, only if they have received the proper burial rites and have the coin. Brother to both Hypnos and Thanatos, all sons of Nyx. I shook his hand, and the last three on the beach stepped forward. Three women bowed to me. They were clothed in long black robes that moved. Shadowed snakes that moved and writhed, covered their arms and moved their hair. Eyes of fury and fire. They had leathery wings that framed each of them. This is Electo, Megaera, Tisiphone, the Irenes. Ah, the kindly ones. You are to deal out vengeance and retribution to mortals that deserve it. We share a strong sense of justice and punishment, my ladies. I hold great admiration for you all because of it. Their cold, hard gazes softened. A darkness surrounded our group on the beach, blocking out all view of the scenery. There was just blackness. In the concentrated shadows, I felt waves of power around me. My lord, the primordials Nyx and Erebus have come to pay respects. They do not tend to enjoy personifying and prefer to avoid it, unless truly necessary. Thank you, great uncle, great aunt. Your presence at my welcome is gift enough. With that, they dissipated as the primordial guards went back to their duties across the universe and the realm. How would you like to proceed, my lord? We are at your command. Six bowed once more, and the rest followed. My subjects, my friends, my family. I wish to know how this realm will function, each of the roles of the beings of my new kingdom, and how I might aid you in your duties. Once I know this, we can begin to work together. For I wish to lead us as we are all part of a single unit, all working together toward a common goal. Styx nodded and held her arm out for me to lead the way. I took the party to the boat by the shore. Charon took the helm and we sailed out onto the river Styx beginning our journey, as the mortal souls were.
My river encircles the entire realm. And here we have the transition from my waters to the river Acheron, the river of sorrow. His waters contain the pains of life. He guards the borders to the underworld itself. Only Charon can maneuver the rivers here. Charon receives a fee for ferrying the spirits, yes? What if the soul cannot pay? If a mortal does not receive the proper burial, including a single coin, then they may not cross to the lands beyond. Once a mortal dies, they become shades, spirits that flit between the land of the living and the shores of the dead. These shades haunt the living mortals, often to get them to give a proper burial so they may cross. But if they still do not, they must wander these shores forevermore. A single coin is no great sacrifice or hardship, my lord. I watched as Charon looked at the empty shores, and I imagined souls trapped there. Few at first, but then hundreds and thousands of tormented shades, all wandering the empty beach, which diminished in size as we sailed further and further away. They may never cross. What if they wandered for a long duration, say, one thousand years, to earn passage across to our lands? Charon's hood nodded once, and Stick smiled widely. We had not considered that option, my lord. A fine compromise indeed. We passed the clusters of small boulders until we came across a large white rock in the waves. The water's currents rushed towards it, but Charon guided the boat easily away. Then we came onto the shores of the underworld itself. As we departed from the boat, Styx led us to a beach littered with materials. Lesser deities, nymphs, and daemons of the underworld were all busy amidst construction. As you can see, my lord, the perimeter is still underway, but once finished, this shall be the entry point of mortal souls. For we intend large gates of bright shining adamant to stand here. Guards of your choosing, shall be appointed to these gates to keep any mortal souls from leaving. For any soul may enter, but none may ever leave. This is the way of these lands, my lord. I imagine a great hound with three heads, all the better to keep watch, loyal, trustworthy, eternal. The Hound of Hades. He had yet to exist but I knew was Cerberus, for my family, with prophetic gifts, told me of him before I left Olympus. I looked forward to when I would welcome my new companion. I nodded my approval to the group, and Styx led us on. Provided the souls get to this shore, there are multiple places they might be sent to next all depending on the actions they took in their lives. Which would you like to see first, my lord? How are the souls judge? You shall judge them, my lord. I did not admit it to them, but this caught me off guard. For how was I to judge each of them? I am a god. I could, of course, but to judge each human when I had not lived on their earth. It seemed cruel. They cannot reach the same level as we. Power almighty, near perfect beings, meant to judge the actions of such flawed creatures. I will never know their struggles, to be so small, so powerless. I decided then, I would find noble and honorable mortal souls ones that had done extraordinary deeds, that knew the nuances of mortal lives, but still could judge what is truly righteous and good. 
three mortals to judge the souls of their brethren. In time they would come. So we walked on. These lands are among the largest, my lord. For most of the souls we shall receive shall spend their days here. This is the Asphodel Meadows, named for the flowers of Asphodel which grow here. Small stems with clusters of small flowers. They give off no scent. The ground of this place is covered with sparse grass that appears grey, for no life remains in it. And so it appears like ashes, when it is but simple grass. It is a neutral place, for the souls that come here will have done no great deeds, but no bad crimes either. They will wander here for eons until their souls are ready to be birthed anew. It is true, they are not pleasant, but they are not a torment either. But I imagine then, possibilities for the wandering souls. They would not just wander and wallow in their waiting. I would make lessons in these meadows. Souls suffering from lacks and excesses in their lives, they would be given the chance to change, to learn, and be better in their next life. They would be drawn to different parts of the meadows, and each will have the opportunity to see. If you look over yonder, sire, just to the left, you will spot the fields of mourning. This is to be for the souls who long for love their whole lives, only to be met with rejection to never find their love reciprocated. They will gather here and be allowed to mourn their losses eternally. But in doing so, we place all who seek love together. There is hope that the love they never found in life may be found in death. Not all is lost. And as we went on and on through the underworld, I realized then all I could do, for the good of the universe, for the gods, and for the mortal souls entrusted to me. And to your right, there over that meadow, is the pool of memory. It leads into the river, Lethe, the river of oblivion, of memory, of forgetting. One drop of the water and all memory of your life fades into nothing. This, my lord, is how we shall prepare souls for their new lives on Earth. Tell me, Lady Stakes, where do the rest of the souls go? Which would you want to know first, my lord? The good or the bad? The good. Save the bad for later. We all loaded back into the boat. We sailed on a branch of the Acheron River, the Pelegathon, the River of Flames, from the shores of the meadows to the next land. Follow me, my lord, for noble heroes, the righteous and honorable, and those chosen by the gods themselves, are rewarded in this realm and may spend eternity in the Elysian Fields. They do not return to Earth eventually, like those souls in the meadows of Asphodel. They may if they so choose to, my lord, but it is rare to choose life once more when met with this paradise. As we stepped into the Elysian Fields, everything around me brightened. Bright sunlight shone on flowers of every color and shape found on Earth. Beautiful birds sang sweet songs, and a cooling breeze carried them. There were fruits, meats, all manner of foods and wines. I felt a levity in my chest, where the meadows of Asphodel felt heavier, not just in my physical body, but in my metaphysical soul. These realms affected all, from the air to the plants and animals. Everything felt lighter here. Lady Stakes, I see now 
why mortals would not want to leave this place. And yet, we are told by foreseers, some shall. In fact, some souls will earn Elysian numerous times and still go back, my lord. But why? Because there is an even greater reward than this. Greater than this? Take me to this place immediately. I wish to see it for myself. I mean no insult when I say this, my friends, but I did not think the underworld could be a place of beauty. A misconception, my lord. Death is an end. Mortals are to be afraid of endings. Even we immortals are at times. But there is beauty in all of life's gifts, in beginnings and in ends. Think of this realm as a new journey for souls, one of great importance and necessity. Come now, my lord, and allow me to show you how beautiful your realm, Hades, can really be. We sailed then towards new islands, further off than the last. From a distance, they did not seem remarkable. But as with Elysium, when we stepped off the boat, it was as if we had stepped past an invisible barrier. Once through, the island itself was bursting with colors. Like the Elysium fields, there were foods some flowers of every color and kind. But here, there was something different. As I looked around, I saw the glitter and shimmer of an otherworldly nature. There were magical waves of power, a sheen over every inch of this place. This isle combined the beauty of the mortal world with the power of the divine gods. Every plant and animal was enchanted in some way. Impossible colors made flowers that shone like precious metals and gemstones. The skies were vivid blue, painted with the softest clouds. Stars that should not be there, shining perfectly amongst them. It made everything agonizingly breathtaking. Welcome, my lord, to the Isle of the Blessed. What fortunate soul should end up here? How may they earn this heaven? Only those who earned Elysian in three lifetimes may be blessed with this realm. A reward for lives they have changed, inspired, helped and saved. Those who spread goodness throughout the world with no ulterior motive of self-reward those who do what is right, just because it is the right thing to do. Then there are souls which cause damage, only spreading vile evil to every life they touch. The worst the mortals can offer. They do not deserve the neutrality of the Asphodel Meadows. They deserve a punishment to fit the crime. But we shall come to their realm soon. Come, my lord. There is little left to see. Back to the boat. We sailed across Archeon. But then, the dark grey murky waters transformed. The grey became lighter and opaquer. It reminded me of smokes, mists and heavy fogs on Earth. You have noticed the change, my lord. We have transitioned from the River Archaeon to the River Lethe, the River of Forgetfulness. It encompasses the lands of dreams, our next destination. As we walked from the boat onto the shore of the Land of Dreams, Hypnos was immediately called for. A small group of nymphs and daemons needed guidance. Hypnos is occupied with preparations of this land, for he is overseer here. God of dreams with the help of his daemons, the Oneroi, to deliver dreams and nightmares to the mortal realm. 
Immortals may walk this aisle, but mortal spirits are strictly prohibited. For we shall have two gates from this realm to the mortal realm. One for true dreams, and one of false dreams. They shall go to the mortal realms at night, and return here each morn. We left Hypnos on this isle, for he was needed by the lesser deities, and onward we sailed, over the pale white waters of Lethe, into the dark waters of Acheron, until it split. These waters rushed faster as we descended further into the underworld. This is the river Cocytus, my lord, the river of tears and lamentations. Further and further into the depths we sailed lower and lower until we were in a cavern. As I listened, I heard faint cries. Every splash our boat made against the liquid emitted a low whispered wail. But that was not the only source. A boat thudded against the sands. We all filtered onto the shores of pitch black sand. The only thing before us, a tall wall that filled the cave from ground to ceiling. But it was not stone, not metal. It looked like bronze, but I knew this place. This is as far as we can go. This is what happens to the worst of mortal souls, my lord. We are to trap them here, the lowest point of Hades, technically a realm in itself. My great uncle, Tartarus, the place we trapped my father, my uncles and cousins, our kin after the war. Styx waved her hand before the wall, and the material morphed. Flickers of images displaced on the wall, projecting the subjects inside the realm for our eyes. The souls of the Titans, as they lay in the bottom of the pit, damaged and healing, broken and trapped. I imagined the souls of the worst humans, tormented by Tartarus and the Titans. I knew the extent of their cruelty. If they could do such vile acts to kin, what would they do to mortal souls? Even those that deserved punishment, their sentence should reflect their crimes. And I knew then, in that moment, what I needed to do. We have an understanding. Tartarus himself knows the role he must play as part of this realm the underworld, and his duties to you, my lord. Yet he refused to meet me and speak to me face to face. We returned then to the upper levels of Hades. I dismissed my council and sent them to their respective homes here with one question. What can I do as your ruler to help you and yours? With that, I was alone, and so I set to work. I forged my place in this realm, for the underworld, beneath Gaia, the Earth, has its benefits. I took the precious gems and shining metals, all found in silos, and made my own palace. My brother may have Olympus, I need it not. My palace cannot be found by any, unless I wish it so. I have something Olympus does not. Privacy. A place to call entirely my own. My very own home. When the mortal souls began to come, the work began, and has never stopped. I did not ask for such responsibility, but now I am glad for it. I changed the mortals, for the good, I hope. But the fates of various mortals in my realm, how they were rewarded or punished, and why, 
our stories for another time. Living Mythology is our attempt to bring the stories of our ancestors back to life. They explained their universe through the medium of their religions. Their gods were not distant beings of academic study. They were living, breathing entities that reflected the wants, needs, good and evil in the very heart of humanity. We only wish to encourage others to study the deep and rich cultures of our forebears. We hope you have enjoyed our labors. If so, then do consider liking and subscribing. If you wish to support improvement in our endeavor, then we do have a patron as well. Until next time, be good to all, but most especially yourself.